Hi, it's Dave, and we're 100 miles in. So I can't believe it's a week ago that the car passed its MOT, and I've done about 100 miles. So I am producing video of it driving, 0-60s and all those kind of things, but um, I'll be honest with you, the weather's been shit. Uh, last weekend it rained, and every moment I've had spare, it's just rained and rained and rained. And now, of course, this weekend we've got a storm, so I'm not going outside, it's blowing a gale, and um, I'm hiding in here. So, but 100 miles. Uh, longest journey I've done is 24 miles in one go, and that was 30, 40, 50, and 60 limits in there. Breeze, lovely, absolutely brilliant to drive. But um, there are things that need tweaking at this early stage, as you might expect, you know. Um, it hasn't ever been on the road, hasn't done those kind of miles, and you start to get a feel for the car. So I've just got to run through those, basically, the changes I'm going to make um, over the next week or so. Actually, I'm away for a few days, so probably be a couple of weeks. But anyway, just run through them very quickly. So first thing is, um, these power connectors here, um, it's obviously the motor moves up and down as you, as you drive along on its motor mounts, and these, I'm worried about how close they are up here. Um, in fact, you can see this one has actually moved slightly. It was much more vertical, where it's obviously hitting here and it's being pushed under. I'm worried what that's going to do to these and what it's going to do to just, it shouldn't have any stress on it at all. So I'm going to change these to come in from the side, donk and donk, re remake uh, the cover for it um, and 3D print it, cover it all back up again. And good. Uh, that should just stop that. I'll give me loads of play then. I'll have, you know, two, two inches of play, which will be loads then. Um, I'm not sure if I ever showed the vacuum pump, but I got the vacuum pump in. Um, that was obviously done for the MOT. There's a pressure switch in here. I've made a little box for it, so it's all nice and secure there. Um, I've redone the plumbing a little bit, and this has got some adapters because these are different size pipes. There's one less connector in here, which is good, so it's just less, less leak and stuff. And the power is from a device here that was part of the RX-8's um, fuel economy or something. I don't know, it pumped air into the exhaust. I'm not really sure. But it's quite cool to use that power because it's relayed and fused in here. So I didn't have to worry about the fuse or the relay. It's just powered when the ignition comes on. That comes on, creates a vacuum. Uh, the switch then turns it off. And then when you pump the bakes, brakes, it comes back on again. That's really cool. Um, up front then, that's really kind of it in the bonnet. Um, I'm not sure if I showed this as well. Got USB and CAN high and CAN low here outside the box, which just easily means I can just plug wires in, uh, reprogram my ECU when I want without having to keep undoing and doing this box back up, um, which is cool, which means I can then diagnose on my bench over there. And also my ECU now outputs on its own CAN IDs, loads of you know diagnostics about the car and stuff. So that's really cool um, I can do that. Uh, under the car, doo -doo -doo, let's see if I can show you this. Uh, right, oh, he's dropped the camera. Okay, let's try again. So under here, you see there, that's the, that's the adapter plate for the motor, and see how close it is to this under uh, frame here. I always knew they were close, and there's only a few mil gap, but when you're driving along and you go over little bumps, it knocks. Knock, 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 knock. So I'm gonna just probably take this frame off and take an inch of aluminium off the bottom here. It's not doing anything. Um, and then put the frame back on and actually give it loads of play so it doesn't knock because obviously when you're driving along and it's knocking it's, um, well, it's quite annoying to be honest um, and I'm also going to check that the distance that the power plant frame is um, away from the other uh, member you can see there there's a special distance it needs to be within just so the drivetrain is all nice and square uh, I'm going to check that as well to make sure that um, it's not moved because I don't want the drive shaft and gearbox to be under any, any other stress than it needs to be. So that's under there to, to check as well. Um, I think my, my biggest criticism about the drivability of the car is the suspension. Um, you probably recall that I replaced the suspension with uh, coilovers, which are adjustable ride height and adjustable toughness, you know, hard or soft. And um, driving it along, it is um, it's very hard, very, very hard. So I need to adjust the, I think there's a thing right on the top you can adjust, I need to look up how much you adjust it to soften the suspension up. Um, the ride height's good, feels great on the road, goes around corners brilliantly, but um, yeah, it's really tough every time you go over a bump. So we need to just soften that up a little bit. Uh, in the cockpit, I'm going to, the little toggle here, I'm gonna make that work. It used to work in the version one that I had, but I, it doesn't in this one. Um, it's just going to be uh, a fail safe, basically. Um, I need more fail safes. You know, you drive it along, you start to realise I mapped the throttle pedal, I've written the ECU, uh, I've done all this, uh, and I need more ways of turning it off. Obviously, you can just turn the ignition off and the whole will die, but you'll kind of lose power steering and everything then. So, I want the toggle to just, you can just toggle it, and, um, and that's when you, um, 
you know, you can kill the engine but keep the car alive. So you've got brakes, power steering, etc. Um, so that's going to be done. That's a safety feature, not overly necessary, but I think it's I think it is necessary actually. Um, in the back, ba -da -ba -dum. so my is my rear battery box, and it's um it's not actually fixed in place. It is just there, but it is like a hundred kilos, so it's um it doesn't move very easily. But when you're driving along, it does move. And um, I don't know if you recall again, I put a brace in here. There's a plastic kind of brace I 3D printed there. And I've got another aluminium brace on the corner here, just to go around here, just to stop it coming this way, because it was just eking forward um, under acceleration, I guess. But the other problem is that if you go over anything, you know, a little bump that just jumps the car a little bit while you're doing, you know, 50 mile an hour, you can hear that this pack actually jumps you can hear it because of them um, so I'm not really gonna take the whole lot out mount it all back in again it's just a ball ache because you've got the rods going through to tighten it all up it's just really difficult you'll remember from previous videos an absolute nightmare so what I'm gonna do I'm actually gonna put a brace on top so it's gonna sit on top from side to side and it's gonna tuck in uh, you see they're tucking behind these uh, the, the chassis here on this side and this side um, probably just glue it to the top to be honest that'll be enough just to stop it walking backwards and forwards and then I'm gonna put um, some vertical braces to the to the top of the car in just um, some pillars almost just maybe three pillars just to stop it from bouncing um, and I think if I get those tight enough it should should do the trick really it's not moving it's just well it is moving <laughs> but just not very much by millimeters I think if I can just stop that with a bit of bracing I shouldn't need to then bolt it to the car if that doesn't work and I can still hear it moving about then I guess well I'll have to take it all out but you know if I can avoid that, that that's better um, other, other things in here and no, I think the boots all good There's the only thing that's actually one thing has failed and it's the pump for my rear water cooling it doesn't matter when the car's driving but when you're on charge uh, that keeps obviously the charging system cool because actually it's the only thing that seems to get hot I don't have any cooling for the motor and inverter and neither of those are getting above 35 degrees uh, You know and I've driven it pretty hard and I've driven it a long way and they're both just like yeah, whatever So I am gonna put cooling in because I think it's the right thing to do for just for longevity Isn't it? You know, you just don't want the temperature to be spiking ever um, And also I can plumb that into the internal heating of the car so whatever heat it does generate, you can get a little bit of cabin temperature because I'll be honest with you, I was driving this the other night, it's freezing cold because you've got no, <laughs> got no temperature in it. Um, it's got no heaters at all. So um, that's a bit of a plus to, to try and get some warmth in. If that's not enough warmth, I might just put a little heater element in. But again, by having that circuit there, the heater element will then be able to pump that into the cabin. The heater element? No, the pump. The water system I put in with the heater element will give me some temperature. So under here, um, I'm just diagnosing at the moment why my pump, which is there, and you can see that, mm, come on camera, my pump, it seems to come on, work for a while, and then turn off. So I've got it all unplugged at the moment, trying to work out why that is. Um, the only time I had that before was when there was air in the system, but there's no air in the system now, I can't hear any gurgling or anything like that, and it comes on, and pumps away, and then mm, stops. Um, so I'm going to do that as well, fix that, but beyond that it's been really good, the car's amazing to drive, um, sounds awesome because it sounds like an electric car, but then you've got the gearbox whine as well, so it sounds like an electro gearbox cool thing, <laughs> it's just bizarre, but um, I'm going to crack on, make a few of these tweaks now, um, I'm actually going to drive the car this evening, um, going out and I'm going to pick up a few friends in it as well, so that's going to be quite cool, and um, I'm away for a few days until next Wednesday, um, and as I say, I just try and get some time, get some weather, and I'll do some road trips and road road footage. And um, oh, one other thing I've bought. Where is it? Where is it? Doo -doo. Yes, I bought this. So this can clamp onto the side of the car, the windows. And it's got my GoPro in it, so I can do some uh, car footage. You know, um, and that'd be quite cool. So I'm going to try and put a nice nice video together with that one. But anyway, look, I'm going to shoot off. Um, I've got a lot to do, and um, I'll catch you up next week. Cheers.